Good afternoon, this is Eric with NEI, and today I'm going to go over the Trimble Terraflex desktop plugin for ArcGIS. So we're out at TrimbleNSphere.com, and I'm going to come here to NSphere, and we're going to go to Terraflex. And I will scroll down on this page till we find the plugins, and we're going to download the Esri ArcMap plugin. Shouldn't take too long. I'm going to open this up. And I'm going to tell it to extract all files, extract it out, double click on the add-in. I'm just going to click on install the add-in, says it succeeded. I will close out and I'm going to open up ArcGIS, ArcMap. I'm running 10.3.1. This should work on 10.4 as well. I think the lowest we'll go down to with this plugin is ArcGIS 10.1. All right, so I'm going to go to the customized toolbar. And I'm going to go to extensions and I'm going to check the box next to Trimble Terraflex desktop. I'm going to close this out. And this is actual toolbar that pops up. I'm just going to right click on the toolbar at the top. And if you didn't have it show up, you could just come in here and check the box next to Trimble Terraflex. All right. What I'll do now is I'm just going to open up. Uh, existing map here. Let me go dig around and find something that I may have. So I'm going to be working with a Esri file geodatabase. You can work with SDE as well. And just to show you what this looks like, I'm going to go to my Terraflex geodatabase here and just show you I have a handful of features in this case uh, some curbs hydrants point generics some poles some signs so just different line and point features uh, if you want to attach photos you'll see here I have some attachments set up for like the pole here I have an attachment let me go find hydrant I think I didn't have one turned on there if I want to include pictures you would go to manage and you would choose create attachments now you need Esri's standard edition or editor or higher so, so standard or advanced in order to have this create attachments enabled it would be grayed out if you didn't have that level of license I'm just gonna tell it create attachments it does everything we need um, now that that's there I have the ability to take pictures in the Terraflex application just to go over a few things I have here so this is the hydrant feature I have a manufacturer and you can see here I have a domain so it's going to have that the a list of manufacturers to choose from I have a color attribute and I have a domain for hydrant color and so forth I have valves and what the surface cover is so any rules that I have attached will carry over to the Terraflex platform just to show you I will go into the domains tab of the geodatabase and we'll go down to hydrant and like here's the hydrant cover you can see my list here asphalt concrete dirt grass etc let's see if I have my manufacturers in here hydrant manufacturers so American Darling Mueller Kennedy etc so all these rules will apply if you had an existing map ready to go all we have to do is click on this administrative window for the Terraflex plugin and what we're going to do is we're going to create a Terraflex project. If this is the first time you ran the plugin, uh, the first time you enable it, it's going to say, hey, do you want to use the default database? Uh, or do you want us to create one for you? And Terraflex requires a database um, to be created in order to store information like projects, users, information like that. So it's separate from the Esri file geo database. The default one is a Microsoft JET database. The first step is, does the, the transformation, is there any issues here? In this case, I have a green check, meaning the datum from my GIS data matches my GPS datum. So there's not going to be any transformation there. Uh, if there was, it would require you to have one set. So mine's no transformations going on, so we're good to go. I'm going to click on start. And here's where you pick what type of features that you want to create 
uh, available for your forms in the field inside of Terraflex. So this one, I'll just keep it simple. We'll just do hydrants. Uh, let's just do hydrants and maybe a water line. We'll keep it simple. So I'm going to do two features, a uh, point and a line. I'm going to hit next. And now I have these GNSS metadata attributes that I can attach automatically to the hydrant and the water line. So these are fields that are generated by Terraflex. So I can say, all right, who is this collected by? So whoever logs into the Terraflex account, that'll automatically be populated. We can do the same thing for device type. If you already had these attributes, you would just select them. I don't have them, so the software is going to create them for me. We have things like correction status. So if I was using a VRS, it would tell me. Uh, correction source. Creation date and time. All right, let's scroll down. I know I have some accuracy stuff in here. Estimated accuracy, so I could have it set to feet. Um, PDOP, if I wanted PDOP information, HDOP. So all this is just extra. And you have to go through and do this for each type. So if I wanted that for just the hydrants, I would just select it there. If I want it for both, then I need to go through and fill out my information. If you wanted to make sure that all of your data met a specific accuracy, say uh, one meter, you would type in a one here. Maybe there's instances when you're out in the field that Man, this, this one water meter, the field crew just can't get it below a meter. If you didn't have this allow field user to override accuracy thresholds, then they would not be able to shoot that point in. So that's why Trimble has added in this, this little box here. Since I'm inside testing and I'm on my iPhone, I'm not going to set an accuracy threshold because I would probably not be able to get the required accuracy of one meter on my iPhone. Actually, I wouldn't get that accuracy. Okay, I'm going to click on Next. And... It's successfully created a project. It's called NEI Terraflex Demo. So that creates the project. Next thing we need to do is click on Edit. And it's saying, hey, the first time that we're going to run this, it may take a minute to publish these forms. I'm going to click on OK. And what we're going to do here is we need to set up the Terraflex side of things. So the first thing is your InSphere, your Terraflex login. So mine's already set up. And I have a bunch of people in my organization. So if I wanted to add, say, uh, one of the salespersons to my organization to be able to log data in this Terraflex project, I would highlight their names. And then I'm going to click on the Publish button. And what's going on here is the Terraflex software is exporting out this schema to an XML. And then Trumbull InSphere is going to create a project import that XML which contains the forms and the rules and all that fun stuff and it'll be available for us to use in the Terraflex application so this is what may take a minute if you had a whole bunch of features a whole bunch of attributes and domains it may take a little longer this should only take a minute or so okay successfully published I'm gonna click the OK button I'm gonna click on cancel you can see my project is now set up I'm gonna click OK and I like to save stuff out, so I'm just going to click on the Save button. We are going to minimize ArcGIS, and I will open up my Terraflex InSphere account. I'm going to log in, just so y'all can see that it's published. So we'll log into my InSphere account here. When it opens up, I will go to Projects, and we'll go look for that new project. NEI Terraflex demo. If I go to people, there should be three of us Chad, Eric, and Phil. Uh, I'm going to go back here. One thing we do have to, to set up here in InSphere if you want to use real time, you would need to come in here and say, okay, I need to configure up a real time. But let's say I wanted to use integrated SBAS, which is in, in the United States, that's called the FAA's WAS. Gets us submeter corrections on some of our devices. So if I wanted to link that to a project, I could say, all right, I want to link NEI Terraflex demo in WAS. So now I would have that real-time link to that project. If I wanted to use, let's say, Trimble's VRS Now, or in my case uh, in Louisiana, I have LSU GolfNet, I could link it to my project here. So that is one thing that you would have to, to come into the Terraflex cloud 
to do outside of the Esri software. So let's see, I'm going to come here and I'm going to go to Terraflex demo and I'll check that off. Okay. Uh, just to show you as well, since we're already in here, I published two forms for this Terraflex demo. And let's just go look at those forms. Here we go, hydrant and waterline. If I click on edit and we look at the template, all of my attributes have come over. Here's all those extra metadata attributes we told it to, uh, to collect as well. So the ones that look like the little Android icon. All right, so we are going to get out of Terraflex. Actually, you know what? I'm just going to minimize this. And what we'll do is fire up my iPhone here. All right. So let's go open Terraflex on the iPhone. Terraflex is opened up. I'm going to let it sync up, and I should have a blue asterisk on the left side next to my project. So right now I've got nine. It should come in there and say ten. There we go. So now I have my new NEI Terraflex demo, and there are my two features, my hydrant and my waterline. So in under five or ten minutes now, we have taken an ArcGIS file geo database, published out a couple of those features to be ready to collect inside of Terraflex. Now I'm just running my location services for my iPhone, so my accuracy is not going to be the best. You can see there, 315 feet. Uh, that that's okay I guess for this demo here but we'll just go through and we'll select a few things here um, number of valves surface cover was it flow tested no alright photos that's that attachment I set up let's take a photo my dog here you may have heard him snoring let's get him hey buddy yeah. We'll get a picture of him. He's out. He sleeps all day. Use photo. And then there's all of our extra attributes collected by device ID, correction status, etc. There's no PDOP in here because location services doesn't do that kind of data. I would need my R2 or my R1 or my Geo7 or something like that to get those attributes. I'm going to hit the checkbox. It's going to log my, uh, my feature. While that's going on, let's do a waterline. All right. Since I'm inside of the house here, we are just going to digitize. Actually, you know what? We'll shoot a, a vertex here. So I just logged a vertex. Let's log another vertex. There we go. We got a nice straight waterline. We hit save. We'll just fill out a couple attributes. Just so y'all can see all these fun things. Look at that beautiful accuracy 300 feet. That's why we use external receivers when it comes to mobile devices is because that accuracy, depending on the location service it's using, either GPS, in this case, it's not using GPS. It's either using my Wi-Fi, or it's probably using my Wi-Fi, or it's using uh, cell towers to determine my location. That's why it's so bad. We're going to hit the checkbox, and this is going to sync up. What we're going to do when this is done syncing, we're going to fire up, there we go, the ArcMap tool. And the second toggle for Terraflex here is the dockable window. And it's set up to download from NEI Terraflex demo. And what I'm going to do, I have a few options here, but I'm going to say let's just download all non-exported forms. I'm going to click on Download Forms button. And what's going to happen is, it's going to go out to my Terraflex account. It's going to see that I've created a hydrant and a, and a waterline. It's going to download that data to my database here. And I have one photo, so it may take a little bit longer, depending on my internet speed here, to download that photo. And there we go. There's our two features. So we'll highlight them here. And I'm going to say Zoom to. And here are my two features. I'm going to just tell it to mark as exported on InSphere. So next time I go to download, it won't re-download those into my database. I'm going to click on OK. 
if I didn't want the data stored in InSphere, I could say, hey, just let's let's get rid of those. And it's going to say, okay, let's delete them. And it should come up and say, are you sure you want to delete them? There we go. All right. Now that data is just stored on my local um, database. So let's get rid of this dockable window here. And let's look at this hydrant we've shot in. We'll click on info. Since we took a picture of my dog Ignatius we should see him pop up there sleeping and then all the attributes come across as well and our metadata attributes so just to show you all that's how Terraflex works start to end probably less than 10 minutes we published a project shot a point in brought the data back in that's about it this concludes today's technique session Please visit neigps.com for more videos, FAQs, and information on upcoming trainings. Thank you and have a great day.